Good morning and welcome to you all to this service of morning prayer on Thursday the 14th of May. Today we remember Matthias the Apostle. After the betrayal of Jesus by Judas Iscariot, the Apostles brought their number back to 12 by choosing Matthias to replace him. He was chosen by Lot from amongst the disciples. The author of the Acts of the Apostles sees apostleship differently from Paul's interpretation of the role and seems to reflect the understanding of the Gospel of Luke. The number had to be restored so that they might sit on thrones judging the twelve tribes of Israel. It was conditional that they had to have been with Jesus during his, during his earthly ministry and witnesses to the resurrection. The point of being chosen by lot rather than by some democratic method indicated the election or choosing by God rather than by mortals. So today we remember Matthias the Apostle. O Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. In your resurrection, O Christ, let heaven and earth rejoice. Alleluia. Blessed to you, Lord God of our salvation, to you be praise and glory for ever, as once you ransomed your people from Egypt and led them to freedom in the promised land. So now you have delivered us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of your risen Son. May we, the first fruits of your new creation, rejoice in this new day you have made, and praise you for your mighty acts. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. The Easter Anthems Christ our Passover has been sacrificed for us, so let us celebrate the feast, not with the old leaven of corruption and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Christ, once raised from the dead, dies no more. Death has no more dominion over him. In dying, he died to sin once for all. In living, he lives to God. See yourselves, therefore, as dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who sleep. For as by man came death, by man has come also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. Glory to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us, so let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so with the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 16 The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Preserve me, O God, for in you have I taken refuge. I have said to the Lord, You are my Lord, all my good depends on you. All my delight is upon the godly that are in the land, Those upon those who are noble in heart. Though the idols are legion that many run after. Their drink offerings of blood I will not offer, neither make mention of their names upon my lips. The Lord himself is my portion and my cup. In your hands alone is my fortune. My share has fallen in a fair land. Indeed, I have a goodly heritage. I will bless the Lord who has given me counsel, and in the night watches he instructs my heart. I have set the Lord always before me. He is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Wherefore my heart is glad and my spirit rejoices. 
my flesh also shall rest secure. For you will not abandon my soul to death, nor suffer your faithful one to see the pit. You will show me the path of life. In your presence is the fullness of joy. And in your right hand are pleasures for evermore. The Lord is at my right hand, I shall not fall. Give to us, Lord Christ, the fullness of grace, your presence and your very self, for you are our portion and our delight, now and for ever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the first book of Samuel, chapter 2, verses 27 to 35. A man of God came to Eli and said to him, Thus the Lord has said, I revealed myself to the family of your ancestor in Egypt when they were slaves to the house of Pharaoh. I chose him out of all the tribes of Israel to be my priest, to go up to my altar, to offer incense, to wear an ephod before me. And I gave to the family of your ancestor all my offerings by fire from the people of Israel. Why then look with greedy eye at my sacrifices and my offerings that I commanded, and honour your sons more than me, by fattening yourselves on the choicest parts of every offering of my people Israel. Therefore the Lord, the God of Israel, declares, I promise that your family and the family of your ancestor should go in and out before me for ever. But now the Lord declares, Far be it from me, for those who honour me I will honour, and those who despise me shall be treated with contempt. See, a time is coming, when I will cut off your strength and the strength of your ancestor's family, so that no one in your family will live to old age. Then in distress you will look with greedy eye upon all the prosperity that shall be bestowed upon Israel, and no one in your family shall ever live to old age. The only one of you I shall not cut off from my altar shall be spared to weep out his eyes and grieve his heart. All the members of your household shall die by the sword. The fate of your two sons, Hophni and Phinehas, shall be assigned to you. Both of them shall die on the same day. I will raise up for myself a faithful priest, who shall do according to what is in my heart and in my mind. I will build him a sure house, and he shall go in and out before my anointed one for ever. Here ends our first reading. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Alleluia. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound to proclaim the year of the Lord's favour, to comfort all who mourn, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit, that they may be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord that he may be glorified. For as the earth puts forth her blossom, and as seeds in the garden spring up. So shall the Lord God make righteousness and praise, blossom before all the nations. You shall be called priests of the Lord. They shall speak of you as ministers of our God. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The Lord has anointed me and sent me to bring good news to the oppressed. Alleluia. Our second reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 37 to 47. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the other apostles, 
Brothers, what should we do? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptised, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, so that your sins may be forgiven and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. For the promise is for you, for your children and for all who are far away, everyone whom the Lord our God calls to him. And he testified with many other arguments and exhorted them, saying, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. And so and th so those who welcomed his message were baptised, and that day about 3,000 persons were added. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. All came upon everyone, because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day the Lord added to their number those who are being saved. Here ends our second reading. The Benedictus. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, fruit that will last. Alleluia. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors, and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. A new child shall be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you to go out and bear fruit, the fruit that shall last. Alleluia. So let us pray. So today as we remember and give thanks for Matthias who was chosen by Lot to replace Judas as one of the twelve. So we pray for the way that God works in our lives. The way that God calls us to various different jobs, roles and responsibilities within our lives the things he longs for us to fulfil, and the gifts and talents we are given to be able to carry them out. We thank you, Lord, for all that we have. Even at times when we feel that so much is taken away, we can be grateful for the things that we still have, food on our table, shelter over our heads, the ability to be able to keep in touch with people on the phone or online. We know that there are so many in our world who would long to be able to take these things for granted. So we pray for those charities working in our world today, for those who are struggling due to lack of funds, but trying to keep their work going to help the most vulnerable and the poorest in our societies. We pray this week for Christian Aid, for this Christian Aid Week, and the work that they do across the whole world. We pray for those who try to provide food and clean water. 
We pray for those who provide shelter and medical care, for those who try to provide education for those in need. Within our own land, we pray for our own government and for the leaders of all nations, for the decisions that they are making on our behalf at this time, that they may gather all the wisdom necessary to make those decisions, to provide us with clarity and a clear way forward. From our prayer intention, we pray today for Bishops Julian, Philip and Jill, and Archdeacons Mark and David in our diocese, as they lead the diocese and support the parishes through this time. We pray for the work that they are doing, for the messages they are recording, for the services that they are leading, for the advice that they are giving. We pray, Lord, that they too may be given that wisdom as we move forward and try to work out eventually how our churches may be open and as places of worship once again. For now, as we meet at home, we know that the Lord is with us, wherever we find ourselves. So we continue to pray for our key workers, for those going out to work and those working from home, those who are furloughed, and those who have lost their employment, for those who are concerned about the future, about how they may reopen their businesses safely, and we pray, pray for employers and employees as they make these decisions and try to sort out a way forward. We pray for all who work in the NHS, across the many different spheres and as other areas of the NHS begin to open up again, we pray for those who are waiting for operations and tests, for those who need to access other parts of the NHS. We pray for those who are working on the COVID-19 wards, for those who are working on the other wards in the hospitals, for midwives, for cleaners, for porters, for those who provide food, for those who keep medical records, and those who work to keep people safe in the hospital. We pray for the hospice, for our GP surgeries and pharmacies, and for those who have continued to go out into the community to provide care for those in need in their own homes. So those who are unwell today, we bring them all before you, Lord, and ask for your healing touch to be upon them, praying especially for Bridget, Ian, Paul, John, Charlie, Morris and Wendy. We pray also for those who look after them, those who care for them and those who uh, protect them this day. And so we pray for those who have died, especially for those who have died this past night, and for family and friends who mourn. We pray especially for the family and friends of Margaret Aspden, whose funeral will take place later today. We ask, Lord, that you would be with her family and friends, especially those unable to be with them at the service. Almighty God, who in the place of the traitor Judas chose your faithful servant Matthias, to be of the number of the twelve. Preserve your church from false apostles and by the ministry of faithful pastors and teachers. Keep us steadfast in your truth as Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Rejoicing in God's new creation, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, Hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen. May the risen Christ grant us the joys of eternal life. 
Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. Thank you very much for joining me for this service of morning prayer, either live or a little bit later on this morning. It's been lovely to have your company with me today. Can I remind you that our evening prayer service this evening will be at half past four, not five o'clock. Um, I have a, a College of Canons meeting starting at five. So evening prayer will be at half past four this evening. And it'd be lovely if you're able to join me for that service. In the meantime, do take care, stay safe, uh, whatever this day may be bringing you, and uh, you remain as always in my prayers. Take care.